OK, uh, welcome to this week's lecture. So this week and also next week, we will talk different types of the graphs. Uh, so this week, we will introduce those basic graphs. And next week, we will talk about a little bit advanced or complicated graphs. So we can also use colors or tables to display our result if um, the table is not um, very complicated. So here, this uh, spreadsheet is colored into three uh, different colors. However, there are a lot of uh, same numbers, so it is not exactly necessary that we color the entire table. Uh, so I think the good rule for us is that do not make your chart look like the flag. OK, we just need to highlight the most important uh, numbers or the different numbers. Uh, so this is another improvement, uh, improved version. However, there are still some problems. So the major issue is that so we use black color as a text and that is uh, on the red or the green color, which makes the numbers harder to see. So this is another improved uh, version where uh, we are using the light highlight colors. So in this case, the text is easier to read. OK, so this is a, a great example that how we can improve the data tables. We can remove those unnecessary colors, those unnecessary elements, like borders. Uh, and also we can align the text so that it's clear to view and also align the data. OK, and we can also group the data so that make it clear. And we will also want to make the, uh, the numbers to be consistent. OK, and also remove all the duplicated items. I, I really like this one because it's it gave us a very important uh, idea that less is more. So all right. OK, so let's also talk about those basic elements of the graph. Uh, so this is a graph. Uh, so it has uh, several basic elements. So we have the data region. So where we are going to put our graph. Uh, we have the scale lines. Uh, so we have the horizontal lines and also vertical lines. So one thing that keep in mind is that uh, we normally use the vertical lines to represent a dependent variable. And also we are using the horizontal lines to, to represent the independent variable. OK, so that y is normally the independent and also x is normally the dependent variable. And we also have the tick markers and also the grid. OK, and also date pass. So for example, if it, this is a line chart or the scatter plot, etc. So that can show the trend of the matters. And sometimes we, we may also need a reference line so that so that if you want to highlight uh, specific values, neat line is like the uh, the border of the chart. And also we have legend. So if you are using different colors, different shapes, uh, different sizes, and we always need a legend. Labels and also title. So title should be clear and also efficient. And also, uh, sometimes we may also want to include the data source. So where do you get the data? Uh, for the y and the x axis, uh, so there are three types of the scaling. So the most common one is the uh, arithmetic scaling. So that is just use the equal intervals, represent the, the equal um, values. The second one is use a semi-log arithmetic scale. So that is a, a logarithm is a power to which the number of 10 must be raised to obtain a given number. So for example, the log of 10 is 1, log of 100 is 2. That is because, you know, it's 10 and also 
Okay, it's 100, etc. The, the last one is log log scaling. Okay, so arithmetic scaling is most popular because that means equal spacing represents the equal steps. And the spacing of the tick markers is consistent. And also we always start from zero or start from the original of the data. So original point of the data. And uh, the extent of the axis must include all the data. Um, and also it's very easier to compare because uh, the major mark and also their labels should be consistent and also um, which make it easier to compare. So in this case, this is the arithmetic scaling. We can see that the difference is the same. So 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. OK, for the x, for the y, that is 2k, 2k, 2k. OK, so and that is arithmetic scaling. Sometimes we may want the semi -log logarithmetic scale. So that means that uh, we use arithmetic scale for the x and the logarithmetic scale for the y. Okay, the reason is because that is a great way that we can see the percentage of the rate of the change. So if you want to see the rate of the change, so you may want to consider using the semi logarithmetic scaling. Uh, so that means if the rate of change um, is inspected by the slope, so the steeper the slope, the greater the rate of change is. Okay, and in that case, we don't have zero baselines on the scale. Okay, so here we can see this is a semi uh, log arithmetic scale. We can see for the x, we are still using the arithmetic scale, so the, the difference is consistent, so 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. For the y, we're using the uh, logarithmic scale so that we start from the 1, which is actually 10 to the power of 0, 10 to the power of 1, 10 to the power of 2, 10 to the power of 3. OK, so that is great for us to see the, the rate of the change. So if we see the line like this, so the rate of change, and if we have a uh, uh, horizontal line like this, so the rate of the change will be smaller. If we have a more steeper rate of change, so the rate of change will be higher. Okay, so that is semi logarithmic scaling. Okay, uh, so let's see some examples here. Uh, <coughs> so here we can see um, uh, this is arithmetic grids okay so that we can see if x and y are increased at the constant rate okay and on this arithmetic scalings constant step constant interval sorry constant intervals uh, uh, we can see a straight line and if x and y are increased at the constant rate okay the first one is constant interval constant rate for this semi logarithmic scalings, we will see a straight line. OK, so we will see a straight line like that. OK, so here this is example that we see that uh, for the price versus the, the weight of the diamond, we can see that for this arithmetic scalings, uh, we see a curve line here. And on this semi logarithmic scalings, and we see a straight line. So that means that we do see a constant rate of change. So when the weight increase, the price also increase. OK, so that means when we are looking at the a chart, so we have to pay attention to their skills, so X and also Y's, to see whether or not they are using arithmetic scaling or the semi logarithmic scaling. The last type of is called the log log scaling. OK, so that means both scales contain a logarithmic scales. Uh, normally, it is very rare to see. So it has been used to show the rate of change of one variable against the rate of change of another variable. So um, to be honest, it is very rare to see that. So 
this is how it looks like by using this log log scalings. Okay, and we can see that is a still a curve line here uh, between the weight and the price.